Hey everybody, it's Savage Lands News coming in this time with another player interview. This time it's Drew Bosco, a Reinar fanatic. He might be the first Reinar to take down a pro quest this season. Um, this was in Spokane, Washington at the comic book shop, the very first day of pro quest season three. Uh, everybody clap for Drew here. Uh, it's not easy taking these events down on Reinar, let me tell you that. All right, so Drew, how long have you been playing Flesh and Blood? Uh, I started back when Crucible of War, a little after Crucible of War came out. Uh, oh, okay. I was, it was in the middle of pandemic. I was playing a tabletop simulator, Pacific Northwest okay. Leagues. That's how I was like mainly playing. And Sick. oh man, uh, back then Dorinthia was like, oh, so I could not beat her. So I got <laughs> frustrated and then I left for a bit. Also like playing online does not the same you know, appeal as playing in person. That's for sure. Uh, I did a Tales of Aria draft, left again, and I came back to the game like two or three months ago. And, mm. oh man, I just picked right back up. Reinar feels better than ever. And he was the first hero I picked up, frankly. So like, just right back into him. Yeah, Reinar does feel better than ever. I've heard the horror stories of Dory and like, you know, Crucible of War Dash and stuff like that. So... I mean, I guess I lived through Starvo, so it makes sense. Sometimes, got, you know. I got to take a break, right? At, you know, I missed yeah. Chain, Starvo, and Prison. That was the worst. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you how painful that season was. Starvo, Train, Prism, all living legend for a reason, right? Yep. So, you know, you've come back, you've played. Have you played any other TCGs before? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've played, I mean, when I was a kid, I played Yu-Gi-Oh!, right. uh, you know, the show got its claws into me. I was raking leaves just to buy, you know, a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh! a week. Uh, <laughs> played a ton of Magic in high school and college. Uh, and then once I heard of Flesh and Blood, I tried it. And I'm like, this is the coolest game. And yep. What about Flesh and Blood stuck out to you? Because you seem to play like a gambit of uh, TCGs. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic competitively. So, but Flesh and Blood... There's something about the way it handles variants that just never makes me frustrated at the end of a game. At the end of a game of Magic, I'm like, oh man, I didn't draw enough lands, or I draw too many lands. Mm -hmm. In Flesh and Blood, it's like, sometimes if your deck is a, built a certain way, you can be like, oh, I only drew one Blood Rush Bellow, or no yeah. Blood Rush Bellows mm -hmm. as the Reinar player. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's very far and few between. Most of the time, I'm like, oh, I misplayed on this turn. And that's when they got the tempo back. And that's just the stuff that, like, keeps me in the game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I never played a TCG before, but I do really like how, like, it's just a kind of, like, give-take relationship, the pitching, the balancing. <laughs> Everybody has four cards, typically. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel like you ever, like, stuck, you know? I mean, no, I guess, like, Rune Blades sometimes. But, yeah, you don't really feel stuck a lot of the time. You can always do something. Yeah, even with, like, the really crappy, like, two or three blood or uh reckless swing hands like you can figure something out yeah you know roll, you roll can your dice roll your dice you can claw claw you can yeah. something right yeah. okay and then um so you said brian i was the first hero you picked clearly you were you know you played him to great success recently what about ryan R sticks out to you he i guess the way i put it is like i used at some point i became sick of rolling and i tried other heroes but then what I realized about him is like rolling's like our sub plan. It's not really the top plan that we do, but mm -hmm. when our matchups are bad, we can roll to try to increase the win percentage, mm -hmm. which other decks can't do. Like if you just have a like if I has a bad matchup in the Icelander, they just have a bad matchup in the Icelander. Yeah. But Reinar, Reinar has a higher matchup percentage against everyone if he rolls high. So, That's true. <laughs> but yes. and then then I just don't roll against people I don't need to roll against. Yeah. You know? Like, I, I won one of my ProQuest games against Icelander. Didn't roll a single time. So. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about the Icelander matchup because uh, it's my kryptonite right now. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. the, the ones I've won, I've rolled a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, talking about matchups, right? So, Reinar, you picked him. Good variance, strong. You know, he's just a consistent hero across the board, right? His matchups are all pretty mm -hmm. difficult, to be honest. But yeah. most of them are winnable, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, no, he's, you can win any matchup with him. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty unique skill of his, right? So what would you say like your when you're sitting down at the ProQuest table and they flip their hero, who do you who do you love to see and who do you hate to see? Oh, I hate to see Fi. I mean, like he is our worst matchup at the end of the day. Like the way they pump out damage is just like you can't keep up with it forever and you can't really erase it. Even the most aggressive Rhino list can't yeah. erase it that well. Like sometimes they can, but Phi does it consistently. Reinar does it with variants. Hmm. Uh, the hero I'm happiest to see, like, I love to see Bravo. Like, I don't think we have a bad Bravo matchup. Yeah. At least my deck doesn't. Like, I've, yeah. I haven't lost a Bravo in a while. Drill Mai, I'm not too scared of. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of matchups I'm not really scared of. Yeah, Guardians in general, I'm like, okay, got it, you know. Play as long as I play well, I have this. Drone my two, right? As long as I play right, I have it. Um, yeah, you, you, I, I think yeah. those matchups you lose to misplaying the most. Yeah, like either you just got really, really unfortunate luck with the triple crippling crush back to back spinal <laughs> dominate <laughs> pulping or, yeah. or pummel. Like you can, you can get bravoed sometimes, but oh, yeah, definitely. Most of the times because you made a mistake, I agree. Yeah, I find it's a hard matchup. I would say Viscera is my least favorite matchup personally. Yeah. I hate the the purple guy. The purple guy oh, is the worst. So man. hard. Yeah, oh, that's a difficult God. one. Ugh. So, you know, during your pro quest, um, you know, do you remember your your first how many or how many rounds was it before top eight? It was six. Uh, it was six or five. I forget. Okay. You need to take a look. I actually okay. have. It. And do you um do you remember any of uh? who your matchups were or, or most or what most of them might have been yeah i actually have them all listed on my uh oh wow okay path tracker luckily. yeah let's let's dive into what, what were what were your standings going into the top eight sure it was a five round tournament uh okay. first round was funny enough arachne Sick. and was the closest match i had all, all day somehow what? i think it was wild like it was arachne with they were definitely fatiguing that's what that was the plan yeah and I didn't bring in Remembrance because I was just like, oh, this is Arachne. Yeah. Uh, I should have. I, I won the game with three cards left in my deck. And oh, I was at 14 life, but three cards in deck is different, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I at a certain point, you're out. Yeah, but I got a Blood Rush Bellow turn that was Claw, Claw, Cadaver's Contraband, and they couldn't block the Cadaver's Contraband. And then mm. I did another Blood Rush Bellow turn right after. Ooh, delicious. All so right. that's, how, that's how I got out of that one. Uh, nice. Then it was Briar. Uh, I have my, in my notes, I did 20 damage on the second turn. So I was... Okay. You know, you started off. off a little strong, yeah. Yeah. But, and I, I think that's a really important thing in the Briar matchup. Like, you got to do something convincing. Yeah, uh, agreed. Agreed. Briar's hard. Yeah. Lexi, Icelander, uh, and then it was Dash. Uh, and it was... Hyper driver, uh, aggressive boost, uh, boost dash. Okay, I've seen so that one. And I'll be aggro, yeah. And yeah, I, like the crank shafts and the, all that kind of stuff with the, yeah, okay. I think Arsenal passed it a video on a deck like that recently. And I think mm -hmm. that's what they're playing. It was blinged out. Every card was foil. It was, it's, it was pretty it's awesome. But yeah, I uh, got them to fatigue. And then the going into top eight, it was Bravo in the quarterfinals. Okay. Uh, Phi in the semifinals. Okay. And then the same dash as the finals. Huh. So you you are you were undefeated, huh? Yeah, I went undefeated. Jeez. And that's a that's a Phi, a Briar, and a two you know two boosty dashes, right? That's actually not that's not that's not an easy walk through the park, man. No, it was more, it was, I mean, it was definitely like, it wasn't like five fives or <laughs> anything. Yeah, but, but it was still like, as soon as I got sat across the five, who, who I'm friends with and I talk with at the shop, he, he's a regular. Oh man, I was like, oh no, you're the one matchup I didn't want to have today. I said that to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said the almost those exact same words too. I think uh, it was like a briar at top eight. I was like, why are you here? <laughs> Where's all my I, old hymns, man? Yeah, I thought the old hymn was supposed to kill you earlier. Yeah, I was like, I wanted all the old hymns. Yeah. All right. So you said your closest match was weirdly uh, Assassin, which is, uh, you know, you just maybe weren't prepared for its its ability to defend or, you know, did it catch you by surprise or? It was it was a very strange Arachne deck. It was very cool. Uh, it was playing like 
it was just like a control fatigue deck. Like it was playing as many good generic cards as they could, like Command and Conquer, Light and Strike, yeah, Heart of Fiendal, I have Aphidia. It was mm-hmm. like it was definitely I wasn't ready for it. It was definitely a yeah, strange. That's, a, that's an expensive but, <laughs> assassin it, deck. It's yeah. a very, uh, so no, I wasn't prepared for it. I mean, my sideboard was. I just didn't put it in remembrance. And that's what mm. I should have done. Because just getting in, I don't know, three more Blood Rush Bellows or three, some combination of Blood Rush Bellow and Barraging Beatdown. Yeah. Yeah. Anything like that, getting put back in the deck would not fatigue me. And also, probably, I think Barraging Beatdown might have been the best one because you just set up a triple Barraging Beatdown. They're not killing you with yeah. damage. So you can probably just take whatever and then. You have all the time in the world. Yeah. yeah. Set up like the double. You know the quad and Tim Alpha Rampage or whatever, yeah, right? Whatever you need to do. Yeah. Okay. And so, so weird match caught a little bit off guard by an off meta pick. You know that happens to basically everybody sometimes, right? Like yeah. you just don't, you just not, you're not trained into it. You don't have the reps. So, what was your favorite of a uh, match of that day? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I want to say. I kind of want to say the Phi. I think that was the close, the second closest game. Okay. The Dash, I had a really strong plan into, especially mm. into that version of Dash. Like, mm. just get as much value out of your blocks as possible. So the Dash games were very similar. Like, just block. Mm. Block for three. Block for three. If you have some of... And even in the in the finals game, I actually threw in defense reactions because I knew the deck they were playing. Yep. Um, but Phi, like... I was at six life. He was at one life at the end of the game. And I won with a, uh, I pummeled my club. That's how I got the win. That's sick. Pummeled the club. Classic, classic way to win. Yeah. I mean, taking down Fi is always just kind of like, you're like, I got it. You know, I'm in, I'm in. Um, Sick. Okay. So it sounds like you had a pretty well-rounded kind of pro quest event there, right? A lot of different heroes you played against, undefeated into all of them. Um, so with that in mind, how do you feel Reinar is positioned in in this meta and the you know possibly the meta to come? We don't know too much about the next set aside from the fact that it's assassins, rangers, and ninja support possibly. Um, how are you feeling on Reinar right now? I'm feeling like he's in a good place at the in the current meta just because the way it's shifting is towards ice decks, specifically Icelander and Old Him, mm-hmm. and Reinar, at least the way that the my deck's currently situated with like 21 blues is mm. pretty good against ice like we can deal with the frostbites we can have ab3 for the icelander and stay alive and just keep hitting back better than they can mm. um like ice just isn't very good against reinar right now so yeah. and you know our old and matchups favorable which is uh always a good thing to be favorable against the deck that's winning the most right now so yes it is uh, as I long as you have to see it if you have the reps on reinar i think it's a good time to pick them up all right yeah i'm in agreement man i eat old hymns for breakfast so yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's hope that deck continues to be number one yeah. all right so before we dive into your deck tech go into the list and, and all of that do you have any plugs you want to you know anything you want to plug on the on the channel yeah uh i don't really have any social media that's geared towards flesh and blood um uh, i'm very active on the uh, Flesh and Blood uh, Discord, on the mm. especially on the Brute Reinar channel. Yeah. Uh, I go by Cold Pad Thai. Uh, so if you ever want to talk about stuff, just at me there. Yeah, see you in there all the time, yeah. helping people yeah. out. Really nice of you. Sharing yeah. your lists, too, which is also really cool. Okay, so uh, let's dive into your list real quick, and uh, we'll see you there. All right. Go ahead, take it away, Drew. Let's see. Uh, let's see what your deck list looks like. All right. So uh, I have this deck list. Should be linked in the description, I imagine. Yes. Uh, so the equipment looks is pretty standard. Uh, this list is very similar, like ninety five percent similar to <laughs> Chandler Toe's calling list, and also some of the things uh, changes he's been making to his list that he's talked about on the Discord. So we'll go through it, and I'll see highlight those changes, but. Equipment, scapskins, claws, gambler's gloves, tunic, and crown of providence. Like nothing crazy there, right? Yeah. Uh, 
first uh, major difference is instead of running three command of conquers, I run two and a cadaver's contraband as like the six damage card that your opponent wants to block that costs two. Uh, you ran also... you run one copy of contraband and you managed to hit the arachne who almost killed you f with it for a double blood rush turn to seal the game, huh? Yeah, and that, that experience is making me, like, and I've, I've won several games, like, just with this contraband, like, getting that guaranteed blood. You know, once you hit, you're getting another blood rush turn, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a great pummel target. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that sucks is that it blocks for two. That's the yeah. only thing. Like, and uh, I'm still experimenting if, like, I want to play with a blue cadaver's contraband and three command and conquers. Because mm -hmm. the initial reason I had this was because I just didn't have three command and conquers. Yeah, it makes sense. But the more the more I play with contraband, I'm like, this card's actually really sweet in this list. So I actually have to think about it. I'm super hot and cold on that card. I used to run that entirely like this. What I took to the San Jose calling <laughs> and the calling before that. I love that card so much, and then every once in a while it tanks me into the floor. Like I I hit, put the blood rush on top, draw two blood rushes, and it's like mm -hmm. my least yeah, favorite yeah. thing in the whole world to see. Yeah, you know? that happens to me too, and it's, it's yeah unfortunate when that happens, but. Additionally, like if you're playing into any like there, there's also remembrance in this deck. So when you mm -hmm. need, when you want to play seven blood rushes, maybe it's too greedy, but you could play three blood rushes, remembrance, uh, three blood rushes, and then a cadaver's contraband. I played six blood rushes this last weekend. It was sick. Yeah, yeah it's no, great. It's nobody can survive. <laughs> nobody <laughs> can survive six blood rushes. Yeah, that's the that's my old time strategy. <laughs> yeah, play six blood rushes. Yeah. Okay, uh, so CNC's contrabands, a little bit of a decision making there, you know, like most because you said you didn't have it, but contraband did work for you, so it not did. A bad yeah. choice. And I just pulled my third command of conquer two days ago, so now I'm just like do I really want to get rid of this card? I have to think about it. Yeah. Uh so I'm testing that out. Okay. Uh okay. Enlightened Strike. Uh it was in Chandler Toe's list. Whenever I first saw his list, I'm like, what the hell is this card doing here? Mm -hmm. Uh it's great. It's a really good card. Mm -hmm. Turns out a two card deal seven is really, really good because that's what we want to do most of the time is just block with two cards, hit for seven or eight, preferably. Uh, it's also really good if you have enough, if you have a three card hand to just, you know, hit back with five, go again, and then hit with a claw. Yeah. And especially in Reinar, when you roll that six or that five, that draw card mode is very good. Mm, I can see I've that. Done, yep. I've done some really cool things with that draw card mode when you get that's a high cool. roll. Yeah. Uh, the race face is there mostly for Fi. It's also very, very good against Dash. Uh, yes. They have to block it. So there's a lot of times, like my main Dash strategy is just block as much as possible, try to hit back a tiny bit. But when a race face is around, I'm like, okay, I'm keeping two cards because a race face is going to buy me like almost a whole turn, mm -hmm. uh, half a turn. Yep. Um, I got three pack hunts, uh, reds, three pack hunt blues. I mean, the pack on blue is like I've used it sometimes. Like it's proven its worth as the as the, one of the blues in the deck. Um, I feel the same way. Yeah, it's just a sometimes it's good. You know, sometimes it's good. So you can pummel it. <laughs> yeah, you, you can get a quad in Tim with it. It's exactly yeah. is it like your best thing in the world to do? But no, but it it can happen. It's just another especially way to if, penetrate. Especially against old hand when it gets down mm -hmm. to the wire, and you're like, I just need mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Like, I'm searching through my list, I'm out of Alpha Rampages, I'm out of, like, Red Pack Hunts, and then I'm just like, oh, yeah, I have blue ones. All right, we're still good. Yeah. We're still good. I can set it up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, remember seeing back the browsing Bean Downs, and you still have Pack Hunt in the list? Like, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely have a way to do that triple intimidate. And yep. since your list hasn't been doing that all game, it's going to surprise people. Mm -hmm. uh, Sink Below is main. It's a really nice card. It comes into a lot of matchups. I mean, not much to say about it. It's just a really good card. Yeah. Uh, first new card, Skullcrack. Um, in this list, it's replacing the Red Smash Instinct that used to be in the okay. list. Uh, I used to go the opposite direction, where I was like, oh, a two cost six, I'll just replace Red Pack Hunt. And that made sense for a while. But this is a closet <laughs> first. And there was a lot of moments that that Red Pack Hunt or that red uh, Smash Instinct would be in hand, and it'd be like, oh, just kidding. I don't get to finish my Blood Rush Bellows turn. Yep. You know, you claw, you claw. I'm one resource short of being able to do the red Smash Instinct. So yeah. 
I reverse the logic and I'm like, okay, I just want more two cost six damage root cards. And Skullcrack fits that perfectly. Pack comes back in. And Skullcrack is just such a sweet card. It is really cool. How often did it fire for you? Like, how, I mean, I've been trying to track this over a lot of practicing to see, like, okay, A, I was able to discard it, and B, the resource actually did something for me. Um, how did, what was your general feeling with that card, like, aside from just being a 2 6? Uh, it does a few things in this deck. So, since we run Pummel, it's a Pummelable 6, so that's good. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's not the worst card to just throw six damage at your opponent if you have to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, like, Smash Instinct Red probably does that job better in those scenarios, but the added benefit of actually getting that energy really matters. Like, I think about all the times that I just needed a Tuna Counter to finish off a Blood Rush Bellows turn, I'm like, oh, thank God I had that Blood, the, you know, the Tuna Counter. Huh, yeah. And, and Skullcrack gives you a tuna counter so that's pretty sweet yeah it's not it's not beast within but it's very good <laughs> okay and it also finishes off the uh claw claw uh attack up yeah for 18 damage just fine yeah I, I, i'm pretty happy with that okay yeah okay interesting uh so we got smash with big trees we got the swing bigs um Smash with Big Tree, as soon as I saw that in Chandler's list, I'm like, oh, yeah, this list is really cool. Because I've never seen that card be played until yeah. he started playing it. And I'm like, ah, I love this thing. Two for seven, man. Two for seven. Like, it's just a good rate. It's a pummel yeah. target. It's a blood rush finisher. And it's good. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, I cited out for the really aggressive matchups where you need to block with cards. But when you're the aggressor, like, it's <laughs> it's a really good aggressive card. Yeah. Uh, not much to say on Swing Big besides it's my favorite card in the deck. Or maybe yeah, the card it's, in yeah. The deck. it's a delicious card. It's great. Yeah. Uh, print more Swing Bigs. They said, so I was talking to the developers, um, uh, and they one of them said that Swing Big was the card they regret printing the most. <laughs> Just give us a toy. Reiner has earned this, you know? Yeah. They said uh, they said that it's too powerful for what 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 it is. Yeah, they can figure <laughs> out. Yeah, I have. A, I had him draw me a copy of Swing Big the way he would have <laughs> reprinted it, and it would have only been seven. So, get rid of the downside. I guess that's okay for me. But the no. two for eight, two for eight matters a ton. It's like, so important. I win a lot of games off Swing Big. Oh, me too. Yeah, it's the best combo ending card. You know, mm -hmm. claw for five, claw for five, Swing Big. Hey, look, twenty damage. That's half your life total. Yep. Or when they get too low to block, and you you know you threaten six, they block with two cards. You threaten six, they block with two cards, and then you finally threaten the eight, and they have to block with three, and yeah, suddenly or, you get a four card hand, you know? Yeah. Or like one of the bigger things about the seven damage and eight damage cards in this deck is when you're leaking that one or two damage once they're below ten, you're getting them that much closer to the reckless swing range. Exactly. Swing big does that perfectly. Yep. And honestly, most people, like, there's only a few matchups where that quicken token really helps them a lot. But yeah. most of our bad matchups, the quicken token doesn't matter at all. So, no, they just eat eight but, almost every time. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Like, okay. and I've had people misplay themselves with the quicken token. I played a Bravo uh, last weekend where they blocked out the swing big and then they had the quicken token. And but they had nothing to do. Like if they just swung their hammer, their Anothos, then they would have wasted the Quicken token, and that got them to misplay to a point of just saying, "I create a size of surgeon pass" because they were just they really wanted to use that Quicken token. Yeah, it trips people up. Yeah, I've seen it happen too. I've seen somebody be like, "No, I'm not going to attack," and it's like, "Okay, now you're giving me so much tempo. You're never going to get a four card hand again." You know? Yep. They ended up having two Quicken tokens waiting for to be able to use either. <laughs> That's <funny. laughs> so, you know. And mm -hmm. just didn't, yeah, the Quicken Token's really not that strong in most, like, even Dorinthia, like, I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, the only one that's sometimes scary is, like, Ice Lander. It's like, oh, two yeah. Wounded Bulls? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, but then they have to block with a bunch of cards to even get there, so there's yeah. still you a lot of tempo to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. good card, good card, right? There you um, go. Both of those are two for seven, two for eight. It, the, the list is makes a lot of sense so far, right? Uh, got Beast Within, Blood Rush Bellow. I mean, we know these cards as Brutes. Uh, mm. 
the pummels like i've been on and off pummels this list was originally called pummel reinar because the initial idea was to take out this rounds on me for three more blue pummels and i've seen other people do that and mm -hmm. they've done some success but i just like when you draw too many pummels it kind of sucks so yes. i ended up cutting them down back to the original three yellow and i've been very very happy with that okay. um I've actually seen some Reinars put in just one red pummel just to trip people up. Yep. Make them think that they have all six. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of like that idea. I'm I'm gonna test it. It sounds really funny. Yeah, I'm off of I'm off pummel personally, but like every once in a while, because especially because a lot of the locals and, and people around me know that like and I post my list on the internet, right? Like they know I don't have it. So, you know, I'll always have a blue pummel or a yellow pummel and I'm, you know, every once in a while I'll just throw one in. And then when I pitch it, I just kind of like, you see what I pitched? Did you, did you see that blue pummel I just pitched? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's most like, of the time you say, most of the time you say I pitch a blue and this time you're going to say I pitch a blue pummel. Exactly. Yeah, see what you, you point at it and then, <laughs> you, and then it, you know, changes the dynamic a little bit. Yeah. Um, so would you say you get good success on this pummel though? Like, um, yeah, you know, I got a it, lot. Of, yeah. I got okay. a lot of good success. This card is awesome and like i was t it took me a long time to be happy about it because i didn't have the spring tunic for a long time and mm. kind of need it in the right in this rhinar list yes because like, it's you know pitch a blue play a two cost card that's why skull crack is nicer than uh smash instinct for me mm -hmm. uh and then you have one floating resource use the tunic pummel and yep once I realized that, I was like, okay, I'm just going to abandon Pummel, try to play the Heart and Cross Trap only, and see if I can play a more aggressive Reinar. I missed it. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to try one night of playing with Pummel and Tunic on Talishar. If I like it, I'm going to buy a Spring Tunic tonight. Yep. And then I did, because I liked it so much. Yeah, so. It, yeah. <laughs> having Pummels and Spring Tunic changes the game, yeah. Yeah, Com it, yeah. it was very, very good all weekend. So much better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Pummel, in for you. You like it. Worked out. It. Things are good. Um, okay, what else we got in here? Uh, one of the other changes, uh, Chandler Toe, and I think this is just a personal preference. He also plays Pack Hunt, and I decided to, or not, not Pack Hunt, Pack Call as yeah. the card. Mm -hmm. uh, three for six, uh, when you defend with it, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a six, you keep, you keep it on top. If it's not, you put it to the bottom of your deck. I one time bottomed a Blood Rush Bellow and lost the game because I just drew no other Blood Rush Bellows the rest of the mm. time. So mm. as soon as that happened, I'm like, yep, I don't want to play this card. And I decided I played Reincarnate for a while because it was a new card. And I'm like, oh, it might be kind of nice against old him mm. to like keep it up, keep up the uh, amount of threats in your deck. But Riled Up is better. Like it's when... It's not the worst card to put in your arsenal mm. for the Blood Rush Bellow turn because yeah. it's it's a three that deals seven damage. Yep. And then with a Blood Rush Bellow, it's nine. So mm. it's act and sometimes you're gonna have enough resources to be able to make that happen, and you're gonna be happy that you were able to make it happen. Or like if you have a weird sand sketch plan turn because those are far and few between, but when you do, riled up is a three for seven. That's kind of cool. It's better than yeah. what a reincarnate or a pack uh, pack call could have done. Yeah, I mean it's my second favorite yellow, and from yeah. my in my opinion, I actually like it. Is a for me, I, I arsenal that thing a lot. Yeah, like totally. I mean, I run a lot more yellows, I think, but but like yeah, it's it's a it's a nineteen damage blood rush. Like I'll take it. Yeah, no, it, you should totally do that. I mean, it's still a yeah. yellow at the end of the day. It's and it blocks for three. Like there's, it does all the things it needs to do in this kind of list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we got Yellow Smash Instinct. Nothing much to say. It's just a good card. Yeah. Um, I use the like pack call or pack yeah pack hunt and Smash Instinct. You know the Intimidate generics. For, uh, I try to arsenal those over most other things except for like Swing Big mm -hmm. um, for the Blood Rush Bellows turn because like especially against like Old Him or Icelander because just getting rid of that last card out of their hand when they've already like. You swing with claw. You swing with claw. They block one. You swing with the next claw. They block one. They only have one card left because you intimidated one earlier, and then you just intimidate it out of their hand. And now you're just like, oh, well, you're you're getting dealt eight. Sorry. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. a good feeling, especially towards the end of the game. Like your last blood rush bellow doing that feels really good. Yeah, I mean that. Like, yeah, that's my favorite yellow. 
I mean, not yeah. counting Blood Rush Bellows. That one's my favorite yellow. I love that card. It wins exactly. games. Yeah, Intimidate wins games. It just oh, totally. it always wins. Like, yep. a lot of people really discount Reinar's mechanic. I think Reinar's Intimidate is really, really strong. Oh, I totally agree. Especially in this current meta, like mm -hmm. making it harder because, like, Icelander and Ultim specifically, they want to block in a very specific way yeah. to make their hand work correct. And yeah. especially Icelander. But the moment you like intimidate the wrong card for them, their plan starts falling apart. Now they have to choose, am I taking eight damage? Or am I, you know, if you like barraging beat down and then throw a pack hunt at them, and like, am I going to block with my two last cards? And it's like a wounded bull and a red eighth or ice vein. And now all they have left right. is two blues that do nothing or not do mm -hmm. very little to nothing. Yeah. It makes hard choices. It um, does. Yeah. It even works on aggro decks, man. Like, I mean, it doesn't. It's not as prevalent in aggro decks, obviously, because a lot of the time they're just going to eat it. But yeah. you know, once you get them to the blocking stage, if you intimidate their best card in their hand, or sorry, you intimidate one of the worst cards in their hand, like yeah. it makes you know it makes a tough decision for them, right? Yeah. I've had a fight had to hit me with two blues because I just double intimidated <laughs> the the two red, you know, the two reds or. Yeah vice versa whatever but yeah, yeah you like got rid of their best card they had to block with their best cards yeah exactly yeah i don't know why i tripped up so much there but yeah yeah i've it works as soon as you get an aggro deck to start blocking intimidate matters yeah and that doesn't even count for like decks that run instants that don't even block so yeah. then there's like oh oops because like I, I played against a bolton once and they were left with two cards in hand and i was gonna either win in that turn or like based on the intimidate it was a card that can block and it was a spirit of Irina in their hand. Hmm. So yeah. you know, get the right Intimidate, you they literally can't block for some decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, such a good card. I love it. Okay, that. and then your blues. Uh, there's, two, there's two choices in there that I have questions about. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the rest of them is a pretty standard. The, you know, one minor differentiation is you're on three Reckless Wings, but I think that's pretty, you know, you're either on three, two, or one. I don't think that changes too much. Um, sand sketch plan is an interesting. How does sand sketch plan been cheat treating you? I like it. It usually blocks or pitches, but yeah, pinch. It's done some wacky stuff. Like uh, I, I played this deck a lot, so I get all the weird. I've seen a lot of combinations of hands, and sometimes you just get like two beast withins and a sand sketch plan in your hand, and you're like, oh okay. I guess I'll right. do some weird stuff this turn, and then you get to do okay. it. Yeah. Uh, the two action points can be really nice to draw my where you just have like a hand of sixes maybe you blocked with one to blow up a dragon and you just want to you want to hit a couple dragons but maybe you don't want to roll you're kind of scared to roll maybe your gambler's gloves already popped earlier so against his plan just gets you those action points to smack some things down um, right. it's cool and against aggro decks when you when i bring in club sometimes very rarely you can do like the something with the two action points where you like hit with a swing big and then hit with the club. Mm, yeah. Sometimes. It's, it's not, rare. It's not bad damage. Nope. But mostly okay. it's a win. And then the other two, the ones that I think stand out the most would be Sift, right? And <laughs> um, this round's on me. So what's the thought behind those two cards? So these are definitely Chandler's ideas. Uh, this round's on me appeared in the San Jose list, and then Blue Sift, he said, uh, in after the tournament, like, He's putting back in blue sift. He used to play them. Now he is back on them. Uh, the blue sift used to be blue predatory assault, yep. and that card felt like. And for those who don't know, it's like a two cost, four damage brute attack, blocks for three. Uh, if you discard it a six that turn, it gains dominate. So, the red one's obviously better. It's a two for six that gains dominate. That's kind of good. The blue one's not very good. Like, the dominate maybe leaks in one damage. It's not very. Yeah. Good. It's not impressive. So, mostly it was there just to block and be extra attacks against old him. But Sift has been treating me a lot better. It actually has a usage. Um, mostly it's going to block. Mostly it's going to pitch. That's a blue card in general in this game. Uh, but I've had Sift really save like some Blood Rush Bellows hands. Like when you have an opponent that like I don't know, maybe you're like you're just like you have like a a Blood Rush Bellow, a Beast Within, a Pummel, and a Sift. And you're like, wow, this hand. Like, if, if the Sift was a predatory assault where I couldn't do anything with it, the hand would really suck. 
-hmm. But because Sift can be played, at the very least, if I just want to get rid of it, I can. Sometimes you can use it to fix like an all blue hand. So if it's like Sift, Sift, this rounds on me, Wrecker Romp, you're like, wow, this is the most, this is the worst hand I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, you play Sift and you get to cycle two of them. So yeah. that's cool. Uh, and this hand, this deck can have clunky hands for sure. Like, but I've had it cycle really bad blue hands, and then suddenly I find a smash with big tree or swing big, and I'm like, well, this hand's been officially fixed. Because yeah. there's lots of powerful cards in the in the deck that can just pop up. You only need one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I mean that's cool. Yeah, I have never tried it, so maybe I'll have to check it out. It's definitely good in like this like claws centered list. Um, I could see it being decent in like cheetah lists if they really want to but i don't think they have the the room for it yeah they need that uh, blue to fire their pull things yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep. all right and uh, then this round's on me right i mean you know traditionally this card is like a turn zero right like just pure advantage on turn zero yep um have you found any other uses for it sometimes it helps with the blood rush turn like outside because the main usage is like you have a blue a blue like against five you just block with two cards. You have a this rounds on me, and you have a wrecker romp in hand. Let's just say that you pitch wrecker romp. You play with this rounds on me, pitching wrecker romp. You draw a card, and maybe it's a maybe it's a swing big you just drew, or a skull crack. So you can at least throw six damage at them. But worst case, you just throw a club at them, and now they have less option. You know, they have five cards, but now they're going to take four damage. Or maybe they'll be more incentivized to block with the extra card. They're like, oh, this is like a free block. So suddenly they, their attacks have minus one, but they still have the same number of cards in hand. Sometimes less, because I've, I've had moments where I'm like, this round's on me, erase space against five. And they're like, oh, shit, I got to block with three cards, you know, or two. Yeah. Sometimes you pummel afterwards, too. Like, it's you can do some really silly stuff with this round's on me. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it's good against five, dash draw my pretty much the rest of the time you're blocking with it yeah okay that makes sense most of our blues are generally single purposed anyways right like they have <laughs> maybe a tiny backup plan okay yep. so let's dive in i mean i don't think anybody needs to talk about wreck a romp right it's our blue six we we love that card it it does what it does um it's the worst card to arsenal that's about it yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah i would rather hold it in my hand than put it in my pocket yeah um, I've, only, I've only pocketed it once and it mattered and it's it pretty funny <laughs> all right let's dive in the sideboard then sure okay so what are those the what color barragings are those that's red oh red you barragings. got red barragings in your sideboard do explain sure so in chandler's original list it was rolling thunder in that spot and mm -hmm. rolling thunder is a one cost red brute card action three block uh roll a six-sided die your next brute attack gets plus x where x is the number roll pretty cool card and i've had yeah. a lot of fun playing it because when you roll a six you kind of remember you know it feels mm -hmm. really good but you have to also think like what's the average value the average value was a one for three for me in my experience and mm -hmm. sometimes you get above that sometimes you make it a one for four which is like wounding blow like blow territory right like mm -hmm. one of the generics uh and then one for five is when you get above rate and that's that gets a little better the only way it goes above rate every time is if you're th using it exactly for club. Because if you do one for three plus club, then it's like a two card seven damage. Mm -hmm. But I grew frustrated with how much I was rolling. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of the matchups where Rolling Thunder comes in, so do the Skull Crushers. And having more opportunities to break your Skull Crushers felt really bad. Especially when you start the Phi matchup and you're like, all right, turn one. Rolling Thunder, uh, Romping Club. This is going to be great. And you roll a one and your equipment breaks before you've gotten a chance to use it. It just yeah. sets you off so bad, and it's all chance. So I switched it to Barrage and Beatdown because um, it's a guaranteed zero. You know, It's a zero-cost card, so you don't have to have a blue to be able to interact with a two-cost card or the Romping Club. You can have a yellow. So like a yellow and a Barrage and Beatdown hand is totally serviceable in, a, in the five matchup. Uh, it's really good into Guardians, so my sideboarding has changed a little bit where I take out a race face and throw in barraging beatdowns because race okay. face doesn't do that much. Okay, yeah. And blocks for less. Um, overall, I've been much happier with that. 
And then it also allows this deck list to occasionally get that triple intimidate yeah. uh, stuff going on, which is very important for actually pushing through the barrage and beat down damage. Yeah, okay. I like the decision. I think red barraging is incredible. I don't know why people... A lot of people don't like it that much, but... Like, even in Defy, it's a two for seven on a claw. Yeah, two for two seven. Two for seven on, is incredible. On a claw. And I play club in Defy currently, so... Yeah, that's two, so that's two for eight. eight. So, swing big territory. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, like a lot of people just discount the fact that the aggro decks... Like, if they block it, you win. Mm-hmm. And if they don't block it, they took seven or eight damage for two cards. Yeah. Which is, yeah. like, beautiful. It pressures Fly to block a lot. And, like, that's not to say that Rolling Thunder is a bad card. It's not. I've had my success stories with it where it's like I like roll a six and then throw a swing big at them with school crushing them out. So it's like 15 goodness. damage. That's like too many damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it feels very good. And you're like, oh, this card's actually really awesome. And then you roll a one and you're like, oh, I guess this card kind of sucks. And you just can't decide. Yeah. Uh, I'm just happy with Roger beat down. It's also really good against Icelander and all the wizards because arsenaling it and then just throwing an intimidate at them kind of like forces them to start making their move while you still yep. have a bunch of blues in hand to not die from their uh, combo turns or their big arcane damage turns. Yeah, you kind of get to play Dory a little bit. Like It's like, show me what you're going to do right now because you don't know how bad my turn's going to be, right? Yeah, um, and yeah. I, I had I had an Icelander game where I just kept barraging beat down and then I'd have to like block out all the arcane damage and I just pass. So I get yep. them to like throw all their stuff at me and then I just block it all. And it only costs me a card. I'll do the same thing. Sometimes I'll just, like, I have a Blood Rush in my hand. I can't quite play it. I'll play a Red Barraging, and then they throw <laughs> down their, like, Channel Lake Frigid, and I'm like, okay, cool, I'll wait. You yep. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did another cool thing. The, the One of the cool things with uh, Barraging be down in general, but, like, with Red Barraging, it's more consistent. It's not bad on, it's actually quite good on the Blood Rush Bellows turns, mm-hmm. as if you were playing with as if you had like a swing big. Obviously you want to swing big arsenal because you want to claw, claw, big attack. But claw, letting them block, and then barraging beat down. Yep. Sometimes you know, they're gonna be down to one card in hand after that barrage beat down, and then suddenly your claw's coming in for nine, and they can't do anything about it. And it enables our highest natural blood rush ceiling without a dice roll, right? If you draw a red and you have the swing big in arsenal and you claw claw. You claw claw barraging red swing big, twenty four <laughs> yeah. baby. 24, That's a yeah. lot of damage. No dice rolling because the other no the other way is to if you have the crazy you know blood rush bellows turns where somehow you have five cards in hand, uh, and you roll and then you get the six or the, the four yeah. or something right. Then you can do two or like a savage feast turn or something crazy with <laughs> a, with a dice roll. Yeah, yep. yeah. That, I've done it. I've done it a handful of times where I got the full you know red barraging or claw claw red barraging swing big a handful of times. But when that happens, geez, it feels it's half their health. Yeah, it's like half their health, more than half their health. Um, okay, so red barraging you replaced one of that's one of your changes, and then I see you know the defensive package. That's a lot of scene, that's a lot of uh, D reacts in there. That's that's nine full D reacts. Do you ever run all nine? Yeah, I do. Uh, against Phi, I'm, I'm still testing some other um, sideboard plans against Phi because he's mm-hmm. the ever evolving. Like, how do I win my win percent against this guy? You know, because mm-hmm. once I figure, once we figure him out, then the rest <coughs> of the field is not as scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I bring in. Currently, I, I do the club defensive club set against Phi. Uh, mm-hmm. I bring in Fate for Scenes, that all you got. Uh, switch to club and school crushers. Um, I also bring in barraging beatdown, take out the uh, the smash of big tree because it doesn't block. Yep. Okay. That uh, makes sense. Yep. That all you got. Sweet. Fate for Scene also comes in against guardians because you just need more uh, D reacts to make sure you don't get dominated, especially against mm-hmm. Bravo. Yeah. All right. All of that makes sense. And then. Um... One copy of Remembrance. I'm on Remembrance now. I love this card, but do you want to explain your thought? Oh my god. Remembrance is such a good card. I, I've been playing with it since I started this game, and back in 2019, 2020, whenever I started playing, I hated it. I was like so annoyed by this card. I'm like, why do people play this card? It's such a dumb card. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's actually a really, really good card. Um, mm-hmm. When your deck really likes the card Blood Rush Bellow, and you get to play it three more times against Old Him, it's a good reason to play the card. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think that especially with Assassin on the horizon, like getting more ways to not fatigue is very, very yeah. important. Because if they continue the current design of Assassin where they're banishing cards, they're going to be a fatigue deck more than likely. Yep. Uh, it just lets you never have a never not have a kill window. Like some, sometimes Oldham is just so aggressive that you have to block with your Alpha Rampages and your blood or your Barragings yep. or your, your Swing Bigs or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like your power cards. And then you get to that very end and you, you all you have to do is get them the two or one, right? Yep. And you just can't quite do it. Remembrance lets you just do it, you know? Yep. Yep. And there's lots of variable uses for it. Like, Against, I bring it in against Dromai because I want more sixes back in the deck. I bring it in against Dash because A, I want more cards in my deck than they have, and B, I'm pressured to block all game. So at some point, I'm going to block with a Blood Rush Bellow, even though I'm on Claws. And hmm. I'm going to block. And then once they're mostly fatigued out, I'm just going to remember and back the Blood Rush Bellows that I had been blocking with and then Blood Rush Bellow them. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Remembrance, very, very good card. I wouldn't play more than one. I've never, ever been in a situation where I'm like, oh, man, I wish I had two Remembrances this game. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same I, boat. Except for, like, when you beast within them on accident. But, like... Ooh, you, I haven't done you, that yet. It happens. <laughs> I bet. I've, I've beast within all of my Reckless Wings in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I... I beast within my blood rush bellows, and that's that's a really bad feel. But I'm never yeah, gonna it's... take out beast within. It's the best card, one of the best cards in the deck. Oh, I'm about to take it out, I think. But then <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Depends All right, the and then the what was that? Depends on the strategy. Like if you're playing claws, I think it's kind of like it's just a really really good card. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen some aggro club lists where you probably don't need it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the rest of your deck is, you know, your AB package, your claw, yep. or your club that you've talked about, and um, Skull Crushers, right? Um, yep. How often does Skull Crushers give you that benefit? More often than I ever thought it would. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it's all it's all variants, right? Right. Like, it's cool that it kind of plays into that thing I talked about earlier, where Reinar can roll himself to uh, out of a bad matchup, where he just gets more uh, matchup match percentage points because you rolled high in the five matchup, right? Mm -hmm. And School Crushers kind of plays into that. Like, if you roll high against uh, the, your bad matchups, it's going to reward you even more. Uh, but mostly it's battle-worn. That's, that's what I use it for the most. Like, blocking, getting that one-time extra block against a mounting anger or a snatch, anything like that is very, very useful. Hmm. Okay, another card I don't run. I really like the list. It's really interesting. So many different decisions. Like, um, it's crazy how the brutes right now are like. There's a couple people winning events, and each list is so different from each other. It's oh yeah, it's wild. Okay, Reinhardt's paradise right now. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, yeah, this is the best Reinhardt's been for me in a long time, right? Like, yeah. um, okay, so maybe we'll um, after this, we can dive into a couple. Um, you know, like not not detailed level but like high level your thoughts into some of these matchups how's that sound sure yeah i actually have the matchups on here so we can just click through that and see the differences perfect all right let's we'll see you guys there in a second okay so uh let's dive into your matchups um how you know generally how you play into them some of the cards that you pick you take in and out um but yeah let's start with Fi. yep Fi is reinar's worst matchup so i want to start there uh, and I changed the strategy quite a bit. So this deck is like a claw, a mandible claws deck first in Phi, but we also, we also have the hybrid option of going into Rolfing Club, where Blood Rush Bellow is now a card we probably block with. Mm -hmm. um, so in this matchup, I bring in the Romping Club. I can highlight these. Uh, Romping Club as the weapon instead of the mandible claws. The Skull Crushers instead of the Gambler's Gloves. Uh, I bring, bring in three Barrage and Beat Down. Three Fate Foreseen and three Battle You Got. I'm taking out the one, the single ten copy of Cadaver's Contraband because it blocks for two. And mm. since we don't care about Blood Rush Bellow anymore, it's just a generic two for six that only blocks for two, which is mm. really bad. Uh, Smash of the Big Tree has to come out because we're becoming defensive to just try to chip down Phi until we can Reckless Swing him, basically. And this card doesn't accomplish that. Uh, Beast Within, we don't want to discard it. We can't lose any more life against Phi. He's 
don't need to help them out. Um, yep. And I just take out two riled ups. They could be smash instinct. Um, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I think I just prefer smash instinct because the intimidate is can cause more awkward blocks than riled up can. And you're not really yeah. discarding, so it's a three for six. I agree. Yep. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, mostly that matchup is just uh, trying to block very, very efficiently, having one or two card hands. When you have a one card hand, maybe you have a swing big in Arsenal, or you just swing with the club and you're happy with that. Um, maybe you do the Enlightened Strike stuff. You're just trying to chip them down. Like they attack you for four, you know, 12 or 14. You try to block eight of it, and then you, you know, you, you know, six to nine of the damage, and then you just throw some damage back and see if you can yeah. keep up that way. And then uh, it's been pretty successful. Um, I've had the most success doing that. I'm also still testing out if the Claws version of this list, which will, which uses the Briar sideboarding thing, mm -hmm. which I'll show here next, because that's our second worst matchup. Um, and that's the other one I'm experimenting with to see if we can just like play the same game, but then catch up with Blood Rush Bellows turns. But this okay. this has been totally great. Like I actually really like this list and. I, the night before the pro quest, I was trying to choose between uh, doing claws or doing club. I had the most reps on the club version. I knew how that matchup went, so I stuck stuck to it, and I reckless winged uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good. This is a very good list, like a uh, version of the deck to reckless swing with. Yeah, that's sick. You only run three copies, so that's, that's <laughs> six less that. life you got to get through. I did that to a Dorinthia once. It was very cool. Just three oh, reckless nice. swings. <laughs> Don't worry, okay. Rhino's a now. Yeah. Uh, the next one. Briar? Briar? Yeah, there you are. Okay. Briar has a little, quite a bit less uh, stuff to do. You just bring in Skull Crushers, and that's all you got. Take out the Smash Instinct and the Gambler's Gloves. I take out Smash Instinct here because I'm still a Claws deck, and Riled Up deals more damage. Okay. So... You, you could choose the you could choose riled up out if you want. If I was playing pack call, I would be taking out pack call, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you go second. You just want to have the tempo. Uh, Briar has a lot of stuff that has on hits, so like coax of commotion, the snatches, force of nature turns. Like you just gotta. That's why yeah, That's why the school crushers come in. You just gotta block it. That all you got. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh my god, that card is so good. Like against Phi, you block the Phoenix Flames, draw a card. You block, and then Briar, you block the Rosetta Thorn, draw yep. a card. It's very, very good. Um, Pummel is really, really good in this matchup. The race space can prevent them from starting their Channel Mount Heroic turn. Mm -hmm. um, Command and Conquer, just always a very good card. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's this kind of matchup where I feel like the third Command and Conquer might be better because. Like against Phi and Briar, which is our worst matchups, you kind of just want to mess with, you want to make them block as much as possible. They're going to take the Cadaver's Contraband a lot of the time. They won't take a Command and Conquer a lot of the time. They'll be like, oh, I can't deal with that. So they'll throw armor at it. They'll throw a good card or their worst card out of their hand, which is still one less card and some armor. Like, uh, yeah, you just got to, you just got to pummel them, throw stuff yeah. that they, that they want to block. Yeah, take their arsenal away, take their agency away with the race faces, pummel yep. them, yeah. Yeah, yep. make it hard for them to do what they want to do. Yep, and then eventually you catch up with a Blood Rush Bellow. That's the goal. Yeah. I mean, and the only thing that sucks about that strategy, as with any Blood Rush Bellow strategy, is if you don't draw Blood Rush Bellows, your deck isn't as good. And that's yeah. okay. That, that's just part of the deck. And the times where you don't draw Blood Rush Bellows, you're going to remember, you have to remember that they're also far and few between. Yeah. Um, the next matchup that is our worst is Viserai. It's the same as Briar and the same strategy, except you're just bringing the Noldrun gloves instead of uh, the Skull Crushers. Yeah. There's not, not much to say. They're a very similar matchup in a lot of ways. You're mm -hmm. going to use your armor for Mavrian Sky's turns if you have to. Mm -hmm. the, those are the only turns that where you have to really like that and the, uh, what's that one card? Rebel and Runeblood. Like those turns are very brutal. Yep, Revel and Runeblood is disgusting. 
It is disgusting. Everfest has a lot of disgusting cards. Yeah, Otherwise, Everfest was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, opinion. they're like, it's funny that you talk with the developer of, of or a developer, and they're like, Swing Big was a mistake. And, and in the same set, it's like Starvo and Revel in Runeblood and Mask of Momentum. It's like, right. Yeah. Oh I mean, a lot of the cards that they listed too, like Macho Grandes are in that set, Revel and Runeblood's in that set, Starvo's in that set. Miraging Metamorph and the Blue oh Auras are in that set. Like, that set needs to be deleted. <laughs> yeah, just ban that set. Yeah. Well, no, that'd actually be kind of intense, but ban some of the cards. Why not? Yeah, yeah. It's just some of the, yeah, some of the most ridiculously powerful cards came out of that, that box. Okay. Every, everything but the potions. Yeah, leave the potions. They're fine. Yeah. And swing big. <laughs> and swing big, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh. And then Olden, I guess, yeah, Olden really? and Icelander, right? Yeah, the so, big, the, the icy, the winter has come, right? Yep. So against Old Him, uh, this is where the Barrage and Beatdown comes in and comes in clutch. So three Barrage and Beatdowns, two Fate for Scenes and a Remembrance. And then you're taking out your Pummels, and you're taking out your Erase Face. Pummel's just not good against Guardian. They have too many defense reacts. It's not likely that a three damage Pummel's going to get through. It's not likely that a four damage Pummel would get through. Yeah. They block very efficiently, and then they still have a defense reaction to back it up. So, when I used to play blue pummels, I'd even take those out um, yeah. as much as possible. Um, you can put in a third fate for scene and take out any of the blues. Like, just take out a this rounds on me, probably, because you're not going to be casting that card against old him uh, or Bravo. And then you get that third fate for scene if you really feel like you need it. But it's not that important. And I think having more blues against old him is more important than a, one more defense reaction okay uh, i think it's a favorite matchup though overall. yeah yeah for sure I you think so. you just you just do six blood rush bellows with your remembrance you know that's what you do yeah especially the newer old hymns are much more teched for aggro they're way more aggressive themselves they don't block as well they can't really shut us down as well so it's like they actually just take way more damage than the old versions did yeah it's pretty sweet. I played against a fatigue old him on Talishar the other day, and it was miserable for me. But I think I also misplayed a ton. Like I, you gotta wait on the remembrance, and that's a really hard exercise in patience. To so mm -hmm. like, because when you draw it, like if you draw it early, you're like, yeah, I'll try to pitch it, get it back to the bottom of my deck, save it for later. But when you get it in that really awkward part where you have like yeah. have used two blood rush bellows, you feel really pressured to like, I need to remember it now. I need to do it now. Get that third remembrance. If you feel like you're at a point where you can get just two and maybe an extra barraging beat down or something, then it might be worth it. But yeah, I remember it once with only one blood rush mellow in my deck, and that was a terrible misplay. You got yeah. to... fatigue old is much harder, much harder yeah. but than the more, aggro versions. More rare. Like, yeah, they well they don't they they can't really exist anymore. But but yeah, totally yeah. agreed. Um, okay. Who else? Oh, Icelander. That's probably the yeah. big one, huh? I, yeah, Icelander. I played Icelander in the tournament, I think, round four. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have a good matchup against Icelander, especially when you have 21 blues, which is uh, higher yeah. than normal for Reinar. But I really, really like it against Ice decks. Mm -hmm. In this one, we bring in Null Rune Gloves and Skullhorn uh, and Barrage and Beatdown. We take out Crown of Providence, Gambler's Gloves, and Sink Below. Don't really need sync below. They they do play attacks, but they're not that big. I mean, they're big, but like there's not. It's not eight damage every single turn. It's just like every yeah. other turn or something. So you don't need any defense reacts. Uh, barraging beatdown is so good against Icelander. It, it is absolutely amazing. It you can either start the turn with it to like kind of punk them out. Like if you have that in Arsenal and they have like the Blood Rush Bellows hand. Like, they can do stuff to your Blood Rush Bellows turn, you know? They can Blizzard, mm -hmm. they can Hypothermia. You got to really watch out for that. Um, but Barraging Beatdown is a really good way to start it. You just say, hey, I'm intimidating a card right now. Do something about it. Yep. And that feels good to do. Yeah, um, as soon as I went up to, from I played 17 and I went to 19 blues, the matchup got so much better. And yep. I can only yep. imagine what 21 to feels like. It feels great. And I kind of, yeah. you just kind of need it, especially when you're trying to still claw. Because some people, like to put in the club for any ice matchup, except mm. for maybe hold him because he doesn't do that much frostbite stuff. Mm. Uh, against Icelander, some people like club. I don't like to do that. I think it's too slow. 
I can't imagine playing without claws. Yeah. Um, I mean, they just started less life too. Like, you just play play the deck at its highest velocity, uh, while while still respecting the fact that they can arcane damage you. So bringing that yeah. idea. AB three is very important. Um, yeah, I block a ton of arcane damage. Once you're at like eleven life, that's like the my, the metric in my head, like ten or eleven. Mm-hmm. You have to really think about what you're doing. For yeah, the rest it can of kill you. Game. Yeah, it can kill you at any moment if you don't have AB. You know, any resources <clears throat> available for arcane barrier. Um, that's my way of winning, at least. Is like. And then I, I try to like use my scab skins to block very early because yeah. they don't have that many or any on hit physical damage. Mm-hmm. So just get the three life out of it when you can. And that includes doing weird stuff like maybe they play the seven damage uh find all fighting spirit before they play the wounding bull, the wounded bull. So just block with your two three block cards. Don't use your equipment then because you want to get like max value out of it. Hmm. The two block, then the one block. You just need as much life against them as possible. And they're gonna yeah, play. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. They're gonna give you option. They're gonna give you uh I don't know, the option to be able to do that. So like mm. maybe they wounded bull and then they uh later they do scar for a scar. Just use your equipment there. That's totally fine. Yeah. That's two and then one. Happy. hmm Okay. Yeah, I mean, so you're feeling confident in the Icelander matchup. That's good. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty happy when it, someone flips up Icelander. I'm like, yep, it's personally fine. one of my worst matchups, but I'm glad to hear that you're crushing it. Um, I feel it's not. <coughs> okay, and then um, anybody else you want to cover? Uh, let's look at the list. Cover is Ailey in a couple months. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's coming. I think a lot of people. I guess we do the dash. That's one of the. Oh yeah, dash is huge right, right. now. Yep. Uh, so I bring in three barraging beatdowns and a remembrance. I take out the smash of big trees and a reckless swing. Okay. So you want to go first because they can play items yeah. or maybe they're just going to boost three times and get that Hanabi blaster counter. And like you dash can play so many different ways. So this mm-hmm. is just the stock way I go for it. If you know, someone's playing a specific version of dash, you can switch that barraging beat down to a fate for scene. Like if you know they're aggro, bring in the fate for scene instead. It saves you more life, and your whole plan is to fatigue them. Um, otherwise, this is totally fine into most stock uh, dash lists. I think that the hybrid version is much harder to beat. I think that the aggro version is much easier to beat. I agree. Yep. Um, you. It takes a lot of. <laughs> It takes a lot of patience, and I'm still working on it with this, because you have to block with Blood Rush Bellow sometime. Because mm-hmm. the whole game plan for me here is just get the max value out of each block. So they throw four damage at you, you block for three. Throw, throw four damage at you, block for three. Throw six damage at you, block for six. Throw yeah. five damage at you, block for three. Do whatever yeah. blocking you can do. Uh, the only time I really hold back on the blocking is if I have an erase face or a pummel or something. Mm-hmm. Like something that can like do slow them down more than blocking would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, race uh, space is super good in that matchup. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I my fifth round matchup against the other undefeated player that night, uh, the ProQuest, was playing Hanabi Agro Dash. I fatigued them in round five. Then they are also in the finals with me, and I fatigued them again. Hmm. So that's just what you do. Yep. Make them play the game, yeah. They yeah. have to play perfect or they lose. Yeah, and even when they do, they still fatigue. And I remember in the finals, like they were like, "Oh no, I don't want to play against you again." Yeah, uh, and they ended up like just drawing up. Like towards the end, they only had like five cards left in their deck, and they're like, "Pass, do nothing with a five with a full hand," because they're like, "I can't fatigue myself." Mm-hmm. And I got a bunch of, t- and then I just got a bunch of extra turns to actually do stuff. So. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Okay, so you're feeling confident in the dash too. Nice. All right. I mean, those I are two, so. the three of the biggest meta decks, right? Oldham, Dash, Icelander. That's really, really good. Yeah, and when I say they're favored, I'm, I mean like fifth, like between like fifty-five and sixty are favored. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. not, we're not like because <laughs> like our our five matchup is thirty-five seventy-five. So it's not like ever, or, 
that's not the right thing. Yeah, 30, 30, 70, yeah, whatever. 30, 70, yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's like, it's really bad for us, but you gain match percentage points as you get better at it and whatnot. Yeah. But the, the dash, the old him, the Icelander, there's still 55 for us. Like, you got to yeah. play right. Yeah, you have to play well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really like Reinar that way because I feel like we don't really have that. We don't have, our bad matchups aren't that bad. And you, every one of our games, we have to, if we play really well, we have a chance of winning. You know? Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, rolling dice doesn't help either. And rolling well. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just hit five turns in a row of dice and you win. And then sometimes yep. you roll two ones in a row and you lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, uh, yeah, that happened. Uh, sometimes rolling ones isn't the worst. It just depends on what t- point of the game you're rolling those ones. Yeah. If it's in the beginning, you can probably play out of it. If mm. it's right at the end, you're probably dead. Yeah, if it's your desperation and then your desperation turns into double ones, you're out, mm-hmm. you know? You're out. And then you know yeah. what? Rolling snake eyes, it's going to happen sometimes. You got it out of the way for, and then, then you just can't lose again, you know? Every 36 games, you will roll double ones, probably. Yeah. Okay. Well, any other matchups you want to cover? or um, um, I think I think we covered most of the major ones, right? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't yeah. know who else. Uh, On the rise is like maybe Dory. Maybe Dory. We can cover Dory, and then we'll close out. Sure, let's do that. So... I have the same plan for the uh, Dorinthi and Katsu. The same sideboard plan, at least. Like, obviously, you play quite a bit differently uh, between the two. Uh, against Katsu, you're just blocking to prevent masculine momentum triggers. And I guess if, if uh, Phi brings in masculine momentum, most of the time we're banking on them bringing in the pouncing links. But if they bring in masculine momentum, just don't let them get masculine momentum triggers. It, it's right, usually yeah. our, we usually have the agency to, do, to make that decision for ourselves. Okay. Or we just forget that that was their third attack. That happens too. Yeah, you shouldn't let masculine momentum hit unless it's yeah. like your blood rush will outvalue their turn by some miracle. Yeah, and that's yeah. that. That's about it. Especially in same thing with Dorinthia. Like sometimes, well, actually, I play a bit differently. So uh, since I'm playing club in these matchups, the blood rush fellow actually just blocks. Oh, yeah, that's true. Most of the time, sometimes. I've gotten a couple times where I'm like, I'm going to be cheeky, I'm going to Blood Rush Bellow, and then I'm going to roll, and then see what happens. And sometimes it works, sometimes I get a two. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. It's yeah. a good way to try to get back into the game if you're mm. falling behind. But I feel really good about this matchup. Like I think if this one's like a 60 or 65 for us. I mean, especially with how many D-Reacts you have. Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. You're you're <laughs> stacked. You're, you're ready. You've got yeah. nine D-Reacts in the list if you need them. Yep, and the browsing beatdown. Club. Yep. the browsing beatdown yeah. really pushes them to want to block. Yeah, uh, which is of course really great for you. Like browsing beatdown plus a romping club is just classic. You know, yeah. we're going back. To, we're, we're going back to welcome to wraith kind of levels of Reinhardt yeah. play, but it's great. It's good stuff. Okay. All right. I mean, I think we've covered all of the major heroes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you. I really like the way you put your list together. We'll be putting that in the description below. He's, you know. He's a very generous person. He's already shared this in the Reinar Discord several times. But we'll put the list below. He's gone out of his way to give you matchup notes. Um, full deck guide all the way in there. Um, comments. Really, really cool that he's put all of this stuff together. I just wanted to thank you, Drew, for coming on. You know, congratulations on your first... Or I don't know if this is your first ProQuest one, but congratulations for winning your ProQuest First day of the season on our Reinar, one of only three to do it that weekend, right? Okay. Pretty impressive. Um, yeah, just congratulations and thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, it was really fun. I love talking flesh and blood, and I especially yeah. love talking Reinar. So yeah, do you have any uh, any anybody in particular you want to plug or anything um, at all before we go? And did you you cracked a gold foil, right? I did crack a gold foil. Yeah, I got a gold foil Rosetta Thorn. <clears throat> Oh, it's got to hang that over our rune blade friends' heads, right? I'll put it on their tombstone when they living legend. Hell yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for sharing this. I'm sure everybody's going to really appreciate this. Um, You know, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.